These are the top 10 most comfortable sneakers that you can buy right now in 2024. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and in today's video I'm counting down the top 10 most comfortable sneakers of 2023. So in today's video we're talking about purely the best maximum cushion sneakers out there, meaning the number 10 slot will be a very comfortable shoe but it won't be the softest shoe underfoot. The number one spot will be, in my opinion, the softest shoe underfoot that's available on the market today. And not only that, I've also made sure to leave links through the YouTube shopping tab at the top of your screen. But with all that being said, let's dive right into the list. At number 10, the New Balance 990 V6. So the New Balance 990 V6 is the latest New Balance sneaker in the 990 lineup, one of the most popular lineups of all time. In my opinion, this is probably my favorite visually on the list. I think this shoe just looks incredible on foot. Now this shoe is one of the most expensive shoes on the list at $200, but in my opinion, it's worth it because this shoe is a perfect mashup of comfort and aesthetics. I think the shoe looks amazing. The New Balance 990 V6 features a fuel cell foam and end cap midsole, which is relatively comfortable underfoot. The reason I put this shoe on the list though is because the upper of the shoe is really well padded and when you pair that with the relatively soft midsole underfoot it becomes a great all-day wear. Now again the price point of this shoe is a little bit higher but in my opinion that's justified by the quality materials that are used on the sneaker. The upper of the shoe uses suede which feels really nice to the touch. You've got some really high quality meshes on the toe of the sneaker. It's surprisingly breathable for a pretty well padded upper and New Balance sneakers last a really long time. In fact I think this is one of the better quality shoes on this list. So the New Balance 990 V6 is also one of New Balance's made in the USA pairs which is essentially a pair that has a domestic value of 70%, meaning 70% of the shoe was made or assembled in the United States. And those pairs tend to have higher quality than other New Balance sneakers that are made overseas. In terms of fit, the New Balance 990 V6 does fit true to size. Previous models do fit a little bit big, but it seems like New Balance has fixed their sizing issue on the V6. And hey, I might be a little bit biased, which you guys probably know if you watch the channel because I love New Balance, but this shoe is my daily wear. This is the shoe that I throw on whenever I go to the grocery store, or take the dog for a walk, or even just wear whenever I'm going out. It's a great all-around sneaker. It's super comfortable, and again, it looks amazing. So if you guys are trying to grab this shoe, again, there will be links in the description below. Number nine, the Adidas Ultra Boost Lite. So the Adidas Ultra Boost Lite is Adidas's latest Ultra Boost sneaker. It is, in a way, the Ultra Boost 23 because it's their mainline Ultra Boost sneaker for 2023. Now, even though the shoe looks a lot like the Ultra Boost 22s and the Ultra Boost 21s, and the main difference is that they replace the boost in the midsole of this shoe with the newer Boost Light, which essentially is a similar cushioning technology or similar cushioning foam, however, it's 20% lighter, which makes a lot of sense for running sneakers because running sneakers you want the lightest shoe possible because it's less weight to drag around with you, and this shoe is definitely noticeably lighter than the Ultra Boost 22. Now, unfortunately, though, lightness does come with its trade offs. The Ultra Boost Light is not as soft as the Ultra Boost 22 underfoot, and it seems like Adidas is fading out the Ultra. Boost 22. In fact, for this video, I was planning to grab a pair of Ultra Boost 22s to sort of compare them to the Ultra Boost Lite, but Adidas has kind of moved them all off their website. And the only place to get Ultra Boost 22s is places like Foot Locker on the sale rack or Dick Sporting Goods or places like that. So while yes, there is definitely a comfort trade off between the Ultra Boost Lite and the Ultra Boost 22, it's not that major of a trade off, and you really are getting a significantly lighter shoe underfoot. Unfortunately though, this lightness does come at a price, and that price is $190, making this one of the more expensive shoes on the list, but if you're an Ultra Boost fan, this is not a bad way to go. So while Boost Light cushioning is not as soft as standard Boost underfoot, it's still very soft and very responsive, and it's probably one of the most comfortable Adidas shoes out there, and when paired to this super soft prime knit upper, the shoe feels like you're wearing a sock on top of a pillow, it's crazy. In terms of fit, the Ultra Boost Lite does seem to fit true to size, which is always a good thing. Adidas has had trouble with their sizing in the past with a lot of their sneakers, and it seems like that can still be a problem, but in terms of the Ultra Boost Lite, you should be fine going true to size. Like a lot of the sneakers on today's list, Adidas has really focused on sustainability, so a lot of the materials used in this shoe are recycled materials, particularly in the Prime Knit Upper. Apparently they use some sort of recycled yarn in the upper, and what's nice about that is that even though they're using recycled plastic bottles in the upper of this shoe, it doesn't seem to take away from the softness or the comfort of the sneaker. Some other standout features of the Ultra Boost Lite is that they've actually added more padding around the heel of the shoe, which not only makes it more comfortable on the heel, and ankle area of your foot, but also makes it so that the shoe doesn't slip off your foot as easily. In addition to that, Adidas has also reworked their LEP system or linear energy push system, which helps you transition into the next step. And they've added newer continental rubber on the outsole. And while yes, the grip of this shoe isn't the best grip in the world, it's definitely workable and it's better than the Ultra Boost 22. And while personally, I prefer the looks of the Ultra Boost 1.0s and the original Ultra Boost models, I do think that the Ultra Boost Lite is a step in the right direction, no pun intended. Number eight, the Hoka Bondi 
Fit X. Even though I'm not really a runner, I have tried a good amount of Hoka shoes, and I will say that the Hoka Bondi X is one of the softest shoes that they make. And the main reason for that, which you guys can probably see, is their super thick compression molded EVA that's underfoot. I mean, let's be honest, this shoe is a chunk. It is super, super thick, thicker than the Ultra Boost Lite, which is kind of crazy. That shoe looks insanely thick as well. But I gotta say that this EVA foam is softer than Boost Lite, and under feet, you definitely notice it. However, unfortunately, if comfort is your main objective, you can't get the full softness of the EVA underfoot because this shoe includes a carbon fiber plate to help spring you into the next step. For runners, that's a great thing, but for someone who's just looking for a max cushion, super soft shoe, it kind of takes away from the softness of the EVA foam. And pairing that with the rocker shape of this outsole, the shoe really does transition you very easily into the next step. In addition to the super thick and super soft EVA foam underfoot, you also get a pretty well padded upper that apparently is made up of hot melt 3D yarns, I don't know, all this marketing speak is kind of BS when it comes to these, <laughs> these sneaker brands. They all come up with these ridiculous names for essentially engineered mesh or knits. According to Hoka, they use a mesh upper with 3D hot melt yarns. Not sure exactly what that means. I'm assuming it's some sort of pressed uh, material, which you guys can see there is some sort of pressed texture going on in the upper. It probably does provide some support. I'm not sure exactly how it supports your foot, but I'm sure it does in some way. And uh, I mean, it's comfortable and really that's all that matters. As with Adidas, this shoe does feature some recycled materials in the upper, which I'm always down with. It's always good to move towards sustainability, even if it's just in a very small way. But it makes sense why Hoka is such a popular brand among runners. This is a really great running shoe. It's very stable. It's very soft underfoot. And if you're looking for a really solid max cushion running sneaker, it's hard not to recommend the Hoka Bondi X. Well, I guess if budget is important to you, it is a little bit harder because this shoe comes in at a retail price of $215. And while no, it's not the most expensive shoe on the list, it's number two. As for fit, the Hoka Bondi X does seem to fit true to size, which is a good thing. In terms of actual width, it seems wide enough for wide footers. I'm a narrow footed person and I had no issues. And visually, I actually really love the way this shoe looks. It's very thick, it's very chunky, but it gives it a very bold and out there look, which I personally love. Number seven, the Nike Peg. Pegasus 40. So the Nike Pegasus line is one of the most popular running sneaker lines of all time and you can tell because this is literally the 40th Nike Pegasus. But the reason the Pegasus line is so popular is because it's consistently a well-priced, solid, all-around running sneaker that is relatively comfortable underfoot. And the good news is, is that the Pegasus 40 is no different. This shoe comes in at a retail price of $130, which compared to a lot of shoes on the list is basically a budget sneaker. And the comfort of this shoe is actually really great. You've got a full-length React foam midsole, which is one of Nike's soft foam technologies. In addition to that, you've got two air units, one in the forefoot and one in the heel, which not only make the shoe a little bit softer underfoot, but a little bit more bouncy as well. Now, although this shoe isn't a max cushion shoe like some of the other shoes on the list, it is still incredibly comfortable underfoot. And when you pair it to the engineered mesh upper that's surprisingly well padded, it's a very comfortable all around everyday shoe. And the reason I have this shoe at number seven over the Hoka Bondi X, even though technically the Hoka Bondi X has more cushioning underfoot, for me, this shoe just feels softer and more bouncy underfoot than the Hoka Bondi X. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is all subjective. It all depends on the person wearing the shoe. So you might consider this to be the least comfortable shoe on the list or the most comfortable shoe. It just depends on what you like. But personally, I think this is definitely the number seven shoe on the list in terms of comfort. One of the things that I love about the Pegasus 40 over some of the other shoes on the list is that this is one of those shoes that can be a great neutral running sneaker or just a great everyday lifestyle shoe. It's very simple, it's very clean, and it's not something that's going to draw a lot of attention. I mean, look at the difference between these two shoes. This shoe looks a lot more standard and a lot more normal. Normal. If you're wearing the Hoka Bondi X to the office, you're going to gain about three inches and probably have one of the most chunky shoes there. Even though the Peg 40 is similar to last year's Pegasus 39, the shoe has some slight improvements that make this shoe relatively more comfortable overall, like making the toe a little bit wider and also adding a bit more arch support. And I know I said I'm not much of a runner, but whenever I do go for a run, I usually wear a pair of Pegasus because it's just enough cushion for me, it's bouncy enough, but it doesn't feel like I'm falling into the cushion. As far as sizing goes for the Nike Pegasus 40, the good thing about Nike in general is that they usually get their sizing right, which means that this shoe does fit true to size. It's a great all-around sneaker. It's very comfortable for both running and for lifestyle wear. And for 130 bucks, it's hard to find a better deal, unless you're buying last year's model for a discount, which is probably the best way to go. <laughs> Number six, the Brooks Glycerin 20. So Brooks is a brand that a lot of runners know and love, and there's good reason for that. They make some of the best running sneakers out there, and the Glycerin line has always been one of their more well-cushioned sneakers. And that obviously stays true for the newest version of the shoe, the Glycerin 20, because this is probably the most well-cushioned pair of Brooks on the market today. It's funny because when you compare this shoe to some of the other shoes we've already talked about, it doesn't look like this would be a more comfortable shoe or a softer shoe underfoot than those shoes, because the midsole foam is a little bit thinner. 
However, what's interesting about that is that this midsole foam just seems to be a bit softer than those midsole foams, which means you get a more cushioned and more plush ride. And it also just goes to show that appearances aren't everything. In fact, with sneakers like the Ultra Boost, you find that the foam actually goes up over the sides of your foot more than you would expect, which means it's a little bit deceiving in terms of underfoot foam. I mean, even this shoe has some foam that actually wraps up onto the sides of your foot, which means it's not gonna provide any cushion underneath your foot, but it is still somehow a softer shoe, even though there's less foam underfoot. As for the upper, the shoe features an engineered mesh, which is very breathable and also really well padded, especially around the heel. That's something that Brooks always does right. They always just throw in a huge amount of padding on the heel, which I love. For sizing, as far as I can tell, this shoe does fit true to size, which is a good thing. Apparently, it's their more standard fit. It is a neutral running sneaker. It does have a relatively wide base, so it is pretty stable as well. But overall, decent looking running sneaker, very comfortable underfoot, and for $160, it's kind of right in that sweet spot, right in the middle of the road, and you're definitely getting a solid running sneaker that can also be worn for casual wear. Number five, the On Running Cloud Surfer. So On Running has a really interesting way of cushioning their sneakers, and that essentially is creating a bunch of cutouts in the midsole of their shoe to allow for literal air cushioning. Not only do these cutouts make the shoe lighter overall, but they also allow for a huge amount of compression when it comes to the foam. And while in my opinion, it's not as springy as some of the other shoes on this list, it is very soft underfoot. So On Running calls this midsole design Cloud Tech Phase, which I assume is not only the shape of the midsole, but also the foam itself. And I've gotta say that in addition to the holes through the foam, the foam itself is actually pretty soft. So all around, it's a very well cushioned experience underfoot. The upper of this shoe is an engineered mesh of some kind, which is really nicely padded around the heel, just like the Brooks shoe that we just talked about. And purely based on my own feel, this shoe does feel like the lightest shoe on the list. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but I mean, throwing the shoe around, it's incredibly light. For me though, the one downside of this shoe, and I guess on running in general, is the design. I know it's very minimal, and I know a lot of people love that, but personally, I think it's a little boring and plain. But again, that's my own personal opinion. You might love this design, and obviously they're doing incredibly well, so they're doing a lot of things right, including the design, it's just not for me. I mean, this is very apparently a Swiss shoe. You've got the Swiss flag in the back, and you know the Swiss love their minimalism, so it makes sense why this shoe looks like this. In terms of price point, the Cloud Surfer comes in at a pretty reasonable $160, and as for fit, this shoe does seem to fit true to size, which is a good thing. I think on running in general gets their sizing generally true to size. I do have to say though, while I think the upper of this shoe is a little bit too minimal and too plain, the midsole of this shoe is really interesting and you can see all the way through it. So for me, that's the redeeming quality of the shoe besides the fact that it's very comfortable underfoot and very well padded. It's a solid shoe and if you like light sneakers that are comfortable underfoot, this is a great way to go. But as you guys know, you can't wear the most comfortable pair of sneakers on the market and not wear an insanely comfortable pair of socks. It's like buying the most expensive supercar with the wrong tires. In fact, as a sneakerhead for years I was looking for a pair of socks that not only looked great with all the sneakers in my collection but also felt great on foot all day and that's why I created the sock brand Apothecary. Apothecary we create your sneakers favorite socks. We have a ton of different styles and colors that match with all the sneakers in your collection plus they also feel great on foot all day because of our proprietary ISO weave technology. So imagine what Apothecary socks can do for the most comfortable shoe on this list. They make it even more comfortable and even more breathable. So if you guys want to check out Apothecary for yourself I've made sure to leave a link in the top of the description below or make sure to check us out at our website apthcry.com. Number four, the Nike Vaporfly 3. So the Nike Vaporfly 3 is probably the most race day focused sneaker on the list. The shoe features an incredibly light upper, it's also very light overall, a super soft Zoom X foam, and also a carbon fiber fly plate underfoot. So this shoe is interesting. First of all, it's the most expensive shoe on the list by a mile. It comes in at a retail price of $250. But it's one of those shoes that you can't really wear every day. I mean, this shoe literally is focused on race day. It's not going to be the most durable shoe out there. The upper is very, very thin. I mean, you can see all the way through it. It's incredibly light, incredibly breathable. I believe it is some variant of Flyknit. And the Zoom X foam midsole is incredibly soft. But as you can see, because it's so soft, it creases very easily. And it's also not the most durable foam. If you get it caught on something, it will probably tear. That being said, though, Nike Zoom X is probably the softest foam on the list. And there's another shoe on the list that we'll talk about a little bit later on, which also features Zoom X, but the reason this shoe is not at the top of the list is because of the fly plate in the midfoot of the shoe. So that carbon fiber plate is specifically designed to bounce you into the next step. And one thing I've got to say about this shoe is that this shoe is incredibly bouncy. It makes you feel like you can jump like five feet in the air. It's a crazy experience and not one that I would want to wear every single day. I mean, even just walking in this shoe, it feels like you're bouncing. It's kind of crazy. It's, it's something that I really like, especially if I'm going on a run because you use a lot less energy in this shoe. But it's not something I'd want to feel when I'm just walking down the hallway of the office or whatever the case may be. And because of the plate, 
that you don't get the full Zumex softness underfoot. The plate kind of runs this way along the shoe, kind of along that Zumex foam seam right there. And so you get a lot of softness in the heel, but not a lot of softness in the toe. In fact, when you lean forward on the shoe, you kind of lose all the cushioning towards the tip of the toe. So while yes, the shoe is incredibly light and incredibly breathable and very soft underfoot, it just feels too race focused for me to put this shoe any higher on the list. It's not a shoe that I would feel like I could wear all day. It's almost tiring to wear the shoe because of how bouncy it is. It is, however, a great shoe for race day. This is a shoe that's probably gonna help you set your best time when you're running a marathon, and the price point reflects that. This shoe is definitely one of Nike's flagship running sneakers. This is the kind of shoe that you throw on before a marathon and you feel good about yourself because you're wearing the most expensive and probably one of the most technologically advanced shoes out there. Now, in terms of sizing, the Nike Vaporfly 3 does seem to fit relatively true to size. However, it is a pretty narrow shoe. So for a narrow footer like me, it fits great, but for a wide footer, this might not be the best shoe for you. It is pretty tight around the forefoot of the shoe, so keep that in mind if you're picking a pair of these up. And again, if you want to grab a pair of these from Nike, I've made sure to leave a link to these shoes in the description below and on the YouTube shopping tab. At number three, we've got the New Balance 1080 V2. So this is actually a shoe that I've had in my collection for the last couple months. This is one of New Balance's newer running sneakers, but at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with a newer version of this shoe later on in the year. That being said, the Fresh Foam X 1080 V12 is a great sneaker overall. It's a great max cushion running sneaker, but it's also a great everyday lifestyle sneaker. This shoe features a huge amount of Fresh Foam X underfoot, which makes this shoe incredibly soft and also very springy, more so than it has any right to be because the foam is so soft underfoot. And pair that with this super soft hypo knit upper, which is relatively breathable, you get an incredibly comfortable all day experience. And I mean, in addition to the heel area providing a lot of lockdown, it's also really well padded, so it feels great against the back of your foot. The aesthetic design of the 1080 V12 is pretty simple and pretty clean and very wearable. I grabbed this white and black colorway, which is pretty nondescript, which I think a lot of people like. And it's one of those shoes that, like the Pegasus 40, you can wear for the morning run or wear to work or both. Whatever the case may be, it's a very versatile sneaker. But the reason this shoe is number three on the list is because of how soft this shoe is underfoot. In fact, it was almost number two on the list, but the number two shoe just barely edged this sneaker out. So, I mean, it could have been number two, could have been number three. Either way, it's incredibly comfortable, very soft on foot. The upper is super soft. It feels like a second skin, which I love. And even though this shoe doesn't have a carbon fiber plate like some of the other shoes that we talked about in today's video, the rocker shape really does help propel you into the next step. Not overly so to where it feels like you're getting pushed into the next step, but in a very natural way, which I love. Sizing wise, the V12 does seem to fit true to size. It's got a slightly wider forefoot area, which is probably a good thing for wide footers. Again, narrow footed. I don't know exactly how it fits wide footers, but it fits me great. And the traction on the outsole of this shoe is also pretty decent. You have a lot of rubber panels, which definitely helps with gripping to the road. A lot of shoes on this list are just kind of raw foam on the road, which is not very durable and also doesn't have the best grip. This, in my opinion, is a great middle ground. You've got a lot of rubber contact and just some foam for some compression, but overall great shoe, incredibly comfortable and pretty decent looking as well. And Honestly, for 160 bucks, you're getting a great deal. If my budget was $160 and lower, this would probably be the shoe that I would go with because I feel like it's the most versatile in that price range. Number two, the Gel Nimbus 25. So in my opinion, this shoe and the New Balance 1080 V12s that we just talked about are very, very similar. But I think this shoe is a little bit softer underfoot. And that's mainly due to the FF Blast Eco Cushioning Foam underfoot and also the Pure Gel technology, which is right under the heel and apparently is some sort of like gel pocket underneath your heel, which makes it even softer underfoot. I mean, plus look at the size of the foam in the heel area. That is thick. And it does wrap up a little bit onto the size of your foot, but not as much as you would think and it's an incredibly bouncy and soft shoe underfoot. Plus stylistically, I kind of prefer the sculpting of this midsole over the sculpting of the New Balance 1080 V12's midsole. I think this is a little bit cleaner. And of course, when you pair the engineered mesh upper with the knit tongue to this super soft midsole, this shoe becomes incredibly comfortable on foot and absolutely wearable all day. And it is really interesting to me how they used a very loosely knit stretchy tongue on the sneaker, not an engineered mesh tongue because the rest of the upper of the shoe is engineered mesh. It does provide some nice breathability on the top of your foot. The mesh does provide some around the toe area but not as much as the tongue and it does provide a nice contrast and feels oh and the shoe also features an ortholite sock liner so you're gonna get even more comfort underfoot I mean from what I can tell there's like three different kinds of padding underneath your heel and the bottom of the shoe it's crazy how soft the shoe is as far as sizing and fit the Asics gel Nimbus does fit true to size which I really appreciated and for 160 bucks you're getting a really good looking shoe that's very soft underfoot for a reasonable price and like the New Balance 1080 v12 this shoe also features a rocker shape on the outsole and no carbon fiber plate, so you get that sort of natural movement into the next step, which I really appreciate. And this shoe is also gonna give you a couple inches underfoot, so if you're a shorter guy, you want some more inches, this is a good way to go. Actually, I mean, a lot of the shoes on today's list are gonna give you a couple more inches, so if that's what you're looking for, this list is for you. You know what, visually, comparing these two shoes together, I know I said I'd go with the New Balance 1080 V12s, 
in almost every situation over this shoe. But you know what, now that I look at these two shoes next to each other again, I honestly think I prefer the style of the A6 Gel Nimbus 25 over that of the New Balance 1080 V12. And I know I said I picked this shoe over this shoe in a lot of cases, but that might be my New Balance bias. I don't know. It's actually probably exactly what it is. Either way, great looking sneaker, good price, very comfortable underfoot, definitely worth checking out. Finally, at number one, the Nike Invincible 3. So before I bought all the shoes on today's list to test them all out and see which shoe was the most comfortable, I was kind of hoping that someone would dethrone the Nike Invincible 3. In fact, this shoe has been, or this line has been the most comfortable sneaker in the last like three top 10 most comfortable sneaker videos. So I was kind of hoping that a challenger would emerge and create something more comfortable than Nike's latest Invincible sneaker, but somehow, Nike did it again. So the Nike Invincible 3 is Nike's latest Invincible sneaker, and I've gotta say, it's a huge improvement over the Invincible 2. Comfort-wise, not by that much, but visually, it's a massive improvement. So this shoe features a full-length Zoom X midsole, like the Vaporfly 3s that we just talked about. However, unlike those shoes, it doesn't feature any kind of plate in between your foot and the foam, so it feels stupid soft underfoot. I mean, Zoom X is just like the lightest and softest foam out there. It's crazy. Nike just has it down to a science. It's crazy soft underfoot. Unfortunately, though, because this foam is so soft, it creases very easily. In fact, just taking any kind of Zoom X shoe out of the box, brand new, it still has some creases in it because that's just how it comes. But the more that you wear this shoe, as you guys can see, I've worn this shoe a lot, it just gets more and more creased up. So in terms of underfoot comfort, this shoe is better than any shoe on the list. I mean, I would say even noticeably more so than the number two shoe on the list, which is crazy to me. But when you get to the upper of the shoe, it is definitely a solid upper. It's very comfortable. It's very soft, especially around the heel area. And Nike says that they have their fly knit zones of breathability which is ridiculous to me because shouldn't the entire upper of the shoe be breathable? I don't know, it's more marketing speak, but it is what it is. But when you pair this upper to the midsole, you get a very comfortable shoe overall. And while, in my opinion, this is not the most comfortable upper because it's not the most padded or even the most breathable, when you pair it to the Zoom X foam underfoot, it's just, it's a whole nother level. And again, Nike did themselves a huge favor by making this shoe look so much cleaner than it did in previous years. I mean, the Invincible Run 2 and the Invincible Run 1s were just, ugly in my opinion. They were not good looking shoes, but they were so comfortable, I wanted to wear them anyway. And actually, if you guys wanna hear a full breakdown on the Invincible Run 3, make sure to check out my video, which I've linked at the top of the screen. I go in depth on all of the different details and parts of the shoe, so if you guys wanna learn more about this shoe, you can click on that link. Or if you guys wanna grab this shoe for yourself and try it out, click the affiliate link in the description below. Plus, like I said, for some of the other Nike shoes on this list, the sizing of this shoe is perfect. This shoe fits true to size. It could probably fit wide footers pretty well because the forefoot area is pretty nice and wide, which I appreciate. The only real downside to this shoe, in my opinion, is the price point, because this shoe is not the most expensive, but but it's also not the cheapest. This shoe comes in at a retail price of $180, which again, is not cheap, but it's not overly expensive. And if you wanna get the same sort of comfort underfoot, you can spring for last year's model, the Invincible 2, which again is uglier, but it's probably gonna be on sale for cheaper, like maybe 150. With all that being said, it seems like Nike has yet to be dethroned when it comes to the most comfortable sneaker of 2023 or of the last couple years. So again, if you guys wanna check out this shoe for yourself or any of the other shoes on today's list, make sure to click the links in the description below. Also, let me know in the comment section down below if you think I left any shoes off of this list. I mean, it's impossible for me to try every shoe on the market, so it's very possible that I missed some, so let me know which shoes I missed in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.